And thank you so much for joining today. Um, our topic and our second in the series of, of matching videos is going to focus around witnessing black lines bank to jail matching in action. So we're going to be focusing today as a preparer in logging in and looking at the power of the most common use case seen out there for organizations to get quick efficiencies and lift out of the transaction matching tool in black line. So just by way of introduction, my name is Brandon Rayborn. I'm the Blackline Practice Lead here at Sensiva. And for the past uh, over a decade, I've, I've really focused my career on helping organizations unlock automation, efficiencies, transparency, and better strength and controls using technology, and specifically the Blackline suite of products. Um, our practice has um, implemented for over 150 different clients across all industries. And we are here to serve our, our customers uh, to ensure if it's a net new implementation, whether they're looking to optimize an existing instance or even just retrain or provide additional resources. Um, that's really the, the role that we play um, across North America. So back to our actual topic, transaction matching today. And although I'm not supposed to have favorites, um, I think if I had to pick one product out there that I have seen give organizations the absolute biggest efficiency gains um, in the first month of, of Go Live, it would bar none be transaction matching. It's designed to get your teams out of what we like to call rainbow spreadsheets and into a more analytical approach to exception handling. Um, we're not going to be waiting till that busy month end close period to actually begin clearing and reconciling transactions. This process can happen uh, in a streamlined and automated way where data is imported in the black line, the matching engine can be scheduled to run, and then there's workflow that comes out of whether transactions are, are matched, unmatched, um, and we'll go through the different categories that, that can potentially apply. So how would this benefit you? Well, accountants uh, would be only spending you know, a matter of, of minutes looking at the exceptions uh, or what we like to call unmatched transactions and flagging those and understanding what are the action items that need to be taken to rectify um, those particular transactions. Um, the other kind of huge benefit, right, uh, by automating the vast majority of, of transactions um, is it gives the flexibility and time to allocate those resources to the areas of, of the process and the reconciling items um, that really might be higher risk and therefore uh, freeing up time to focus on where that risk actually lies in the process. So, in a perfect world, at the end of the matching process, all unmatched transactions or exceptions would be identified. Um, timing items would be known, added to the reconciliation, um, and it allows that process to occur end to end in a fully automated fashion once all of, all of the, uh, the inbound data and engines and various logical rules are set up. So this isn't some futuristic utopia that we are talking about today. This is achievable today and we are seeing actively throughout our client base. What I'd like to do now is just pivot over to an actual account reconciliation. And so to level set, we are logged in to one of our partner demo instances. And I am going to today be serving as Kim Wilson, in the preparer role and one of our geographical divisions, the Denver division has a Bank of America bank account. They have relatively significant volume flowing through this account um, on average about 50,000 transactions a month. And so the first thing you'll notice at the very top of this reconciliation is this associated match set section. And this is really the link between Blackline's transaction matching tool 
and any reconciliation that you would want to drive matching scenarios with. Um, so again, today we're just starting with bank to jail matching, but there's plenty of other opportunities and other use cases out there. And in this case, we're matching B of A bank transactions to the underlying GL transactions. And you'll notice there's kind of different buckets or categories of where these transactions reside. So the vast majority of the transactions, in fact, close to the 50,000 number, um, are in the automatic matched category. This means that Blackline automatically cleared those transactions without any further human approval or involvement, full end-to-end -end automation. Okay. The second bucket here is called suggested matches. And a suggested match will allow organizations to apply or cast a wider net of logic and then have a human go in and review what the suggestion from Blackline is. Um, now, the benefit there is in cases where there might be some missing data, say a check number is missing, um, we could provide, oh, match one date or a range of dates and an amount, um, but maybe the check number is missing. Blackline can make a suggestion and have someone go in and, and, and review some of those and see whether it would make sense to either match or reject that suggestion and send it back to the unmatched state. And then the third category I'll call to your attention is called manual matches. These are ones in which the system itself didn't create an automatic or a suggested match, but the preparer went in, um, reviewed some of the unmatched transactions and manually cleared them. There could be opportunities here to further create logical rules to pick up these transactions and further automate, or there could be other reasons why these are the exceptions that are that are still needing to be manually looked at and cleared. And you'll notice kind of the volume here is representative of what we would see across our client base um, in a bank to jail matching scenario. So, you know, 80, 85, 90% of transactions are going to be automatically cleared and we're, we're freeing up time and resources to focus on um, those exceptions. Let's drill down and look at what an automatic match in Blackline entails and looks like. So as we drill down, you'll see this full list of all the close to 50,000 matches. So if I back out, that's an example of a one-to-many match. What I'd like to do is go into um, just a few other kind of examples of what could be possible. So. Let's say uh, we have a situation where, and this is very common in bank to GL, where potentially the, the ledger transactions are getting booked, but it doesn't clear the bank for a couple of business days. So we can provide a, a tolerance and we can say, well, if the amount and the check number are equal, but the dates are within whatever that tolerance is. In this example, we set plus or minus three days. Um, Blackline can still clear that and call it a good match. So uh, you'll notice check amounts equal here and, and the dollar amounts tied to the penny, but the date is off by a day. Each data element can have its own tolerance and threshold, and you can really dial in to exactly what needs to be matched and should be matched um, in the system. One final example I'd like to go through is when we talk about casting a wider net and you look at suggested matches. So in suggested matches, we might have a situation where, I'm just gonna go into one of these first examples where we've got check numbers that agree, but nothing else agrees. So in this case, you'll notice what's highlighted in blue are check numbers that all tie, but the dates are beyond what we would consider uh, an acceptable tolerance in this example. So the bank transaction cleared on the 7th, and then the GL didn't get booked till much later in the month. Um, and the amounts here don't actually uh, completely tie, right? There's, there's a slight uh, delta there. Um, Blackline is saying, we're going to make this suggestion here, 
but we would have someone, either the preparer or an approver, go in and review this. And I could either say, yes, I agree, and I'd like to approve this adjusted match, or no, I, I, I want to send it back to the unmatched grid. Um, I think in this example, what I notice is there's a couple of ins and outs here, and these are all the same dollar amounts. Um, and then there's a that slight delta, right, between the total amounts. And I think the job of the preparer would be to go in research this and understand whether they would approve or send this back to the unmatched grid. And the benefit of this approach to high volume transactions is it can really free up time and resources for the accountants to focus on what matters and what matters is what's left. So we're gonna end today's demonstration with what's left in the unmatched grid. And so you'll notice out of close to 50,000 transactions cleared in a month, we've got 18 total uh, bank transactions and, and five general ledger transactions um, left that are unmatched. And if you kind of look at this data a little bit further, you'll notice that the majority of these are due to fees on this side. And so 16 out of the 18 transactions are fees. These need to be booked in the ledger so this is truly a reconciling item that we would add to the face of the reconciliation. And we could even journalize these fees if the journals product in Blackline was fully activated. Um, likewise, if I clear this out and you look over on the right-hand side, what's left in the GL, I notice everything's at the end of the month. These are gonna be timing items, um, deposits in transit that we're gonna expect to clear the bank in a future period. So again, we just, add those to the reconciliation. And within a matter of a couple of minutes, the preparer can be done with this bank record. So now, our next video in the series is going to be focused on the second most common use case out there in matching called credit card matching. So for those of you that might have point of sale systems and high volume credit card uh, transactions and accounts, um, this is one of my absolute favorite use cases to get additional value out of the platform. Um, we look forward to, to posting that video a little bit later in the month. And thank you so much for your time today. And again, our, our information will be also kind of posted on this slide. You can reach out at any time. We are here to serve our customers and ensure you're getting all the value that you deserve out of your Blackline instance. Thanks for your time.